Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to thank you everyone for taking the time to join us. Uh, right now, just got a little bit of Kurt Franklin on and smile. Amen. You look so much better when you smile. Take some time to smile. Amen. Even when you're alone or by yourself or having a moment. Amen. Take some time to just, you know, just feel good. Amen. And uh, it may sound a little crazy, but if you can make yourself feel bad, you can make yourself feel glad. All right. May we pray. Eternal Father, we want to thank you for this time of coming together to study in your word. And we know your word is food for the soul. It helps to strengthen us, to inform us, sometimes to break us, but for the purpose of building us. I pray that you use me and us and this time of sharing your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise. Give God some praise. Amen. Amen. I want to call our attention to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. And last week we stopped at verse 21. And today we will pick up at verse 22 and continue all the way down through verse 33. Amen. Acts chapter 2, verses 22 through 33 and of course we know this past monday uh many uh, people celebrated valentine's day on the day after the super bowl and uh, i'm a firm believer that everyone should take some time to find you a sport that you can support whether you play or not and what i've learned is that if your team is able to keep playing it brings additional revenue to that area and for those folk that are working at stadiums and other odd jobs just by fact people coming into the area and uh you know and and not just odd job whatever job it may be it brings income in so that people can take care of themselves so that's why i encourage sports even if folk are not sport fanatics or sport fans so great game hats off to the rams and the Bengals. you know the rams uh superseded and became victorious hey great game uh want to encourage everyone to uh, take time to make sure you love yourself. And then secondly, don't forget to get out and vote. We're in the period of voting. And then lastly, for those that are uh, able to, we will have Dr. Carl Horton uh, this Sunday at 9.30 a.m. Central Time who will be doing a focus on the effects of COVID on the heart. The effects of COVID on the heart. And here again, uh, the, the details are definitely more than what I just stated, and uh, but just join us. The Zoom information will be out, and we just want to share that with everyone. If you look at Acts chapter 2, uh, verse 22, we find the following for our hearing. And remember, Peter is now the chief spokesman, the preacher that is helping individuals that witness the Holy Spirit come down upon those 120 men and women and received the Spirit of God and they were speaking in languages and they had a misunderstanding about what was taking place. So Peter, if we can say in a preaching moment, a teaching moment, was explaining to those that were unclear about what we now call the day of Pentecost or the birth of the church. He says to them, men of Israel, Listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by mir miraculous wonder, miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him as you yourselves know. So Jesus as Messiah Peter is trying to help them to make a connection. Remember, the whole idea is about witnessing and laying the seeds and the groundwork for those that didn't have an understanding. Uh, allow me to pause and say this. When we teach and when we witness and when we share with others, no individual gets the concept of Jesus as Messiah the first time. So, Teaching requires patience as well as what? Persistence. And Peter has this captive audience 
And he's taking time to help them to connect the dots with the dots. Sometimes when we talk about a biblical framework or a spiritual framework, that's what ministers and leaders and preachers and teachers of the word are doing. They're helping us to connect the dots. And the more we, we connect the dots, and, and you remember dot to dot, the picture becomes what? Clearer. And, and in fact, none of us accepted Jesus right off. Even if we accepted Christ at an early age, we still had to what? Mature. We still had to grow. We still had to develop. So he's helping them to go back and remember Jesus that they had seen walking the earth, doing miracles and signs before their eyes that caught their attention. And he says in verse 23, this man, was handed over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge. And you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. So this is interesting. Notice that the evil things that happened to Jesus were intentional. In fact, the word said God's set purpose and foreknowledge. God had a specific process in place by which Jesus would come through. And of course, as we were going through the script, Jesus could make some choices, but his path was already set for him and his life and calling was upon him. I just had a conversation with some of our members earlier today and about the path that I'm on and have been on as far as my ministry. God called me into this. And like many of you that are listening, God placed a calling on your life. And the calling may not necessarily be being a pastor or a preacher. Let's just say whatever that deep-seated purpose is in your life. My wife is a nurse. And when you speak with her, she talks about uh, having dreams as a nurse and her and her sister would visit uh, people in the hospital when they were children. And, and I can't remember specifically at, that, um, at, at the time, I don't want to say it wrong, who they were visiting. And there was something about the hospital and nursing that caught her deepest attention. And the same with you. That may be something that you're extremely passionate about or compassionate about or desirous when it comes to serving. And sometimes people don't look at those desires as being the same as a calling, but in a broader sense, they are. So when God has a calling on a person's life, there's a path that he or she may be on that gives them parameters. They may move from the left to the right within the parameters of whatever that may be, but they're still a moving in the direction of the fulfillment of what that calling or that purpose may be on their life. And this is what Peter is telling them, that, that God, what, what you've seen happen is something that God purposed for Jesus. And the other part, though, He's, he, he's also letting them know their part in Jesus' death. And he talks about how they had him nailed to the cross. Here we have those in Jerusalem of the Jews which did not believe that Jesus was the Messiah. But there's also a law in the Torah that thou shalt not kill. So the Roman crucifixion, if we can say that, or the, or the cross, comes from a different culture. And with these two entities combined, and here again, Peter said, and you with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. So the crucifixion was not a, was not a, of, a of Jewish culture. But it was a Roman practice. And it's interesting when factions or groups or cultures do not share things in common, will find ways to use other people or other groups to 
carry out something that they know they should not be doing. Verse 24. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. The purpose of God was not that Jesus would go through these evil times and struggles and then die and that become the end of the story. Notice how Peter said, but God. And many of us know that but changes everything before but to say that something else is getting ready to supersede in terms of moving forward. So Jesus died, but God what? Raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep him in the grave. So when we're hearing this, part of it's history. Peter's not just sharing a narrative of, of Jesus or a myth, but he's talking about what actually took place. And here again, we know with history, it's based upon the story of those that tell it. But according to this word, as we uh, uh, listen to Peter earlier in chapter one about all the other witnesses, that saw the life of Jesus and his death and his resurrection and his ascension, that he's not just speaking his words. And of course, this is according to Luke, who's writing about these early days in the church. Notice how when we read verse 25, Luke is often referencing some scriptures in the Old Testament. We looked at Joel, I think uh, Psalms, and here we are back at Psalms again. In the sense of David, that is, I'm sorry, David. Verse 25 said, David said about him, talking about Jesus. I saw the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will live in hope because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. So how is it that David, who lived thousands of years before Christ. I hope I got my years right. Um, but but live, hundred, I know, hundreds of years before Christ. How, how is it that David would be able to talk about Jesus, talk about the Christ, or talk about the Messiah? In other words, God had already revealed in David, just like many of the other books in the Bible, even before David's time, that the Messiah was always present and spoken about even in the other books of the Bible of the Old Testament. We said it before, and we must say it again, that when we study the New Testament, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts, going on, Romans, Corinthians, so on and so forth, we find that the Old Testament is referenced over and over again. Even Jesus said that he came not to destroy the law and the prophets, but he came that they might be what? Fulfilled. So here David is speaking about seeing the Lord, and now we're talking about faith. Verse 26 said, about living in hope that he was living in anticipation of a Messiah. And he was so convinced about it that he spoke as if Christ was present even at that time. Verse 29, the word said, brothers, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him an oath 
that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Let's pause for a minute. We refer to David as many things, a warrior, shepherd, king, cupbearer. Rare do we hear the kind of language that we hear Peter just spoke. Patriarch, and then secondly, prophet. David was being prophetic. Just, just want to highlight those, those couple of things. But what David was also doing, he was looking at who down the line, generations to come, descendants to come, will take up the throne. And it's interesting because he's not thinking about Solomon. He's not thinking about anyone between himself going all the way to Jesus, he's shooting straight to the Messiah. And there's something special and important about that, that he's anticipating the coming of Jesus Christ. Verse 32, God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of that fact. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and you now also hear. So Peter is reiterating on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And even if we were there at that time, the resurrection would have been a, a, a tremendous event to wrap our mind around. On top of the fact, Jesus walked around on the earth for 40 days. Can you imagine what people were saying? A man they saw beat to death, nailed to a cross, was buried, got up from the grave, walked around, and then on that 40th day left. So the, P Peter is helping them to, to make the connection that this is that Jesus whom you saw doing all those great works who is now the Messiah. And he's saying to them that you're witnesses. You're seeing it too. And not only that, the thing you hear taking place over here in the upper room with all the disciples and all the other people who are excited and jubilant about the spirit of God coming down upon them and filling them. This is what you're this is what you're seeing and this is what you're hearing. How is Jesus made real to you in your life? That, that's what we're talking about. The personal experience, the personal witness that we're reading in, in the scripture. But you too have a live history with Jesus. When I look at what Jesus has done for me, going back to the days that I remember Christ being in the church, my relationship, uh, the feelings and the thoughts I would have because of my relationship with God and, and this and having things, this was not something that someone told me to believe. It was not something that uh, I was brainwashed in. That these experiences that I have and also you have that are real experiences with Jesus, real experiences with God, is not something that can just be easily swept under the carpet or walked away from. God has a path for us God has a calling on our lives. God knew us from before the beginning of time. And I just want to share with you to be a witness and not to be afraid to share with others a living Jesus. Not just one that we preach about, but one that we sense and feel who walks with us and talks with us. We pray to, we pray, we pray to him. We, we praise him. We honor him. Not just on Sunday when we feel good, but throughout the week.
Well, this is what we wanted to share today. And again, we wish you and your family well. Uh, I do want to remind everyone again, for those who can, and it's not just our congregation, but 9.30 a.m. Central Time, cardometroftw.com. We will be having Dr. Carl Horton, who will be uh, sharing insight about the effects of COVID on the heart. I believe the conditions of the heart of when individuals have had heart conditions. But here again, the specific time, I'm not trying to look at it. I just want you to come on out and be with us. Well, look, thank you for this time and, and may we pray. Eternal Father, we thank you for Peter and also the men and women in the Bible that received your spirit and spoke in other languages to be, O oh Lord God, witnesses to be teachers and to be ministers, to be that early part of the Christian church, O oh gracious Father. We thank you too, O oh Lord, that we are part of that same church, that same spirit. We may have different names. We may be in different geographical locations. We may not all worship the same or look the same, but yet we are your people, O oh Heavenly Father, and we thank you for that. We pray now, Lord, that all that we do will glorify that name, and we thank you for this day too, O Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. Look, thank you for joining us. And we hope to see you in worship on Sunday. And take care.